Hi, it's Corrine for Cut It Home, and today I'd like to share these Heartfelt Creations stamp and die set. This is the Ariana Blooms, and this is a beautiful die set. This comes with five flowers, and if you get the matching die set with it, this is also by Heartfelt Creations, and it's made by Spellbinders, and it cuts out your stamps perfectly. This die set also comes with three different size stamens to add to the center of the flower. So you get a large, a medium, and a small. So here is what the stamp looks like. I've already placed it on my Fiskars stamp press because today I'd like to share with you how you can make some of these flowers and also a card. We'll put together a card out of one of these flowers. Emma Lou is the creative director with Heartfelt Creations and she does have a video where she shows several flowers that she has made out of this stamp and die set. So I will put a link to her video in the description box below. It's definitely worth watching. She comes up with some brilliant flowers. So let me set these aside and just show you. I started playing with these last night and here are two flowers that I made from them. This one here is stamped in um, worn lipstick, Distress Ink, and then I colored it using some Spectrum Noir pencils that I got from Cut at Home, and these are the primary colors. I used the pinks out of this, and that's what this flower looks like. I have not added a center to it yet, as you can see. And then this one here is also stamped with worn lipstick and inked with worn lipstick. So I am going to show you a couple of those today. Now, I pulled out some gray cardstock because I want to see how it looks maybe using some Versamark on the gray. I've not tried this, so I'd like to see how this works. And throughout this video, anything that I can fast forward, I will do so. That way the video is not too long. Here's my Versamark ink, and this is just a wet, sticky ink that you can use to add embossing powder. I'm going to try and use this and um, use some white embossing powder and see how that turns out on this cardstock. So the back of this stamp comes with this sheet that you can pull off and then it can stick. You can also, I have great results just using these without a stamp press or an acrylic block. You can use them just with your hand and it will always stamp perfectly. So I'm just going to ink up my stamp. I will stamp it down and add some Versamark to it. Um, excuse me, some white embossing powder to it. With a color like this, this gray color, you could also just do tone on tone, meaning you don't need any embossing powder with it, and I bet that would look really pretty. So I'm just going to push down, give it some good even pressure. I am going to do all my stamping right now. That's how I like to do it, do all my stamping, all my cutting at once. So I decided I want to do another one with just Versamark to see how that turns out on the gray. Now I'm going to use some Worn Lipstick Distress Ink by Tim Holtz. There will be a link to this and the other products in the description box and also at Cut at Home's blog. And I'm just stamping this on some white 
cardstock. This is smooth 110 pound cardstock. You can pretty much use anything you'd like. So I think I'm going to try something different that I've not tried yet and I think I'm going to ink this one with sponge sugar and last time what I did when I made this flower is I cut them out first and then I ink them. I think I'm going to try and ink them first this time and then cut them out. Okay, so as you can see here, I quickly colored these flowers in. I used the Warren lipstick to stamp them, and then I used the primary colors of the Spectrum Noir in 29 and 34. So I used the lightest pink and the darkest pink. I went around the whole thing in the light, and then I just used the darkest pink around the same shading that the stamp already comes with. So that was very quick to color. Okay, so in order to cut these out, I'm going to match up my die over my image, and I'm using two post-it notes to hold that stamp in place while I run it through the machine. You can use scotch tape, you can use painter's tape, whatever you have on hand. You just want something that's going to hold it for a minute while you run it through. So once you have that place down, you want to put your multi-purpose platform down, all the tabs closed. You want to lay your die on here with the die facing upwards. So this is the cut side up. Now I'm placing my cut, cutting mat and my extra mat on top of that. And these dies will cut lightweight chipboard, fabric, muslin, um, canvas. pop right out and as you can see it gives it a perfect cut every time. So I'm going to cut the rest of mine out and I'll be right back. I'm also going to cut a bunch of just plain white paper out for our, our project today. Okay so I'm back. I cut out the all my flowers and I cut out about I think five sets of just plain white. I love using white flowers so I cut those out ahead of time. I like just having a lot of those um, because I never know exactly how many I'm going to use at the time. And I cut out, I believe, three sets of stamens. So again, just um, because I'm not sure yet what I'm going to use. I cut out one set of that gray. That's all, that's all the paper I had left of that gray. So I just cut out one set of that. So now let me set this stuff aside and show you there's so many ways you can alter these, whatever you like to do. So I'm going to start with, here is a set of the um, flowers that I stamped in the uh, worn lipstick and then inked with the sponge sugar. So the first thing I like to do 
is give them a little spray. This is just a bottle of water here. So I'm lightly going to spray them on the front and on the back. That'll just help the paper be able to, I can work with the paper a little bit better. And then once it dries, it really helps hold its shape. So I just like to dab that off with a paper towel. And using a stylus, this is the same stylus I use with my scoreboard, I'm going to bend up the petals. So I'm just lightly going to break up the fibers in each petal. So I'm just going in circular and then bringing it down the petal. And as you can see, that's going to give it some shape. So I'm going to quickly do that to all my petals. Okay, so now that I've done that, I'm going to turn my flowers over and now I'm going to do this in a circular motion right in the middle. And as you can see, that gives the flower again more dimension. And while my flowers are still a little bit wet or my papers are a little bit wet, I'm going to use my reverse tweezers and just bend the flowers. Just again, giving them a little bit more shape. You can do this with your fingers. If you have a quilling tool, you can do that. That's what I love about these stamp and die sets is you can really make your flowers look however you'd like. So even with one stamp, you can get lots of different looking flowers and as you can see today, I embossed some, I colored some, I inked some, you can spray some with um, different mists, and I also am going to be doing some flowers in just white, which is probably my favorite. But I like to have all different colors on hand. You can use just regular color paper and use VersaFine ink. The VersaFine will give you a, a watermark look and uh, it'll just give you a, a darker shade of the same paper that you're using. So you can get a lot of variations um, in your flowers just having those two things on hand, color, colored cardstock and then uh, Versamark or a Versamark pad. So now I'm going to adhere these. And as you can see, I didn't color in the middle because I knew I was going to be covering them up. So I'm just going to use a little bit of hot glue and I want to offset each petal as I'm working with it. You can use wet glue, you can use beacon glue, whatever you have on hand. Any type of wet glue will work. So there is just one of the flowers that you can make. So now I'm going to, in fast plate, put together a couple of the other flowers and I'll be right back. Now with these flowers, I'm going to bend them with my fingers, bending them down and just kind of puffing them out here kind of bending the tips of them a little, just manipulating them to where you, you're happy with them. Here are the white ones and here are five of the large petals, two of the smaller petals and on this side I have or uh, the medium and then on this side I have three of the medium and four of the small ones and I'm going to spritz them all with a little bit of water and these I'm doing a little bit different than the ones I did before which will give them a different look. So I'm going to 
take three of them and match them up. And I'm using my large paintbrush and just wrapping them around. It doesn't matter if you want to go up or down. I think I'll go up on these. And I'm just curving the petals around it. Again, just giving the petals a little bit of shape. Okay, so for the very tiny petals, I used a smaller paintbrush. And now what I'm going to do, I'm making this flower here first. So again, I'm using three of those and four of these. Now there's also the tiny, tiny ones. I'm not using those. I might not use those in this flower at all. So I'm going to take, I'm going to make a, a basically a rosebud for the center of my flower. So I'm taking the two petals opposite each other and I'm going to cup them to each other. Okay, so I'm going to, and then I'm going to add hot glue and wrap all the petals up around each other. If you're not comfortable with hot glue, you can do this with wet glue. However, it'll just take a little bit longer to dry. You'll have to hold it in place a little bit longer. Now I'm going to add hot glue to the bottom of these petals and wrap them around each other. Just trying to add a little bit here. I'm going to try and kind of round them as I hold it. That way it gives it more of a bud shape. Now I'll take my next small flower and there are going to be points on this. As you can see, there's points. I'm going to take the points and add them to the middle of each center. That way it's going to offset my flower. So this petal will actually be right here in between these two petals when I glue it down. So I'm just going to add a little bit of hot glue to the bottom. And then what I like to do is let go and kind of just move it around while the hot glue is still a little bit warm. Okay, and once I'm happy with that, I'm going to add a little bit of hot glue right here around each petal at the base. And then pull these up to each other. And I'm going to continue doing the same thing with all these petals. Now this one I'm not going to add hot glue to the center. I want it to slowly um, bud out as you can see that it is. So now I'm just simply going to add them, off-centering them to my next three flowers. So as you can see we have a totally different looking flower than any of the other ones that we've done. So I'm going to set that one aside. This is the one I'm going to be using for the card that we'll be making. And now I'm going to go ahead and adhere these all together. I'm not doing anything special with these. I'm just using the largest petals that I bent around the paintbrush. 
and I'm just adding them, offsetting them, them each time. So far I've added four, five, excuse me, and then I have two of the small ones here, so I'm going to add those into the center as well. Again, continually, continuously offsetting them each time. And my last one. So that gives me a very dimensional flower. Now this one I'm going to add the stamens on the inside. I'm going to add a couple of the large ones and then probably two of the medium and one of the small. I'm using my stylus to break up the fibers in this to have them curl up. Now for this I'm going to use some wet glue just because the um, um, hot glue will not give me a chance to move it around if I need to. The wet glue will allow me a little more time so I can adjust it. So I'm using some Scotch Quick Dry. Isn't that pretty? And you can change it up by changing the color of the stamen if you wanted pink in the middle or make a pink flower with white stamen. Again, for the purpose of the card that I, I'd like to make, I wanted it white on white. I love that look. You could also add it a pearl you could also add a pearl into the center if you'd like. So let me set these aside for a moment and I will um, get the stuff I need out to make the card. I have a piece of white cardstock that is seven and a half by eight and a half tall, and I'm going to score it in half and make a tall card. This will fit in the business size envelope. However, mine's going to be dimensional, so mine I will um, have to hand deliver or put in a bubble envelope if I were going to send it. So I'm placing it on the seven and a half inch side, and I'm scoring it at three and three fourths. If you lightly wipe your paper, any oils in your hand will help guide the stylus down the groove of your scoreboard. So again, I'm scoring it at three and three fourths. Fold this in half and give it a good crease with my bone folder. And then I have two pieces of paper that I cut out, um, printed out from the computer. And these are using Heidi Swap's Vintage Chic Collection. This mat here is three and five eighths by eight and three eighths. So it's, it'll fit just inside of this white card. And then this other piece is three and three eighths by eight and one eighth. So I'm going to use my Tim Holtz distressor and distress the edges. So I just went around the edges with some distress paint just to give them a whitewash look after I've distressed them. And now I'm going to add half of a doily that I had in my stash. I think first actually I'm going to add some lace.
Yeah, let me add some lace first. This is from Craft Supplies 1. And what I like to do when I'm using hot glue is, when I'm done with my project, I like to take my heat gun to my project, and if there's any little hot glue strings hanging around, that will make them disappear. It just They just kind of shrivel up and go away. So here's my finished card. Again, this is the size of a business envelope, but with the dimension on it, I will either make a box for it to fit in to give to the recipient, or I will hand deliver it or send it in a bubble envelope. Here's a closer look. So here's my finished card using the flowers and as you can see you can get totally different looks from them but no matter what you do they turn out gorgeous and they're super simple to use. And like I said, the possibilities are endless with colors and centers. In all of these, I did not use centers yet because I want to wait till I use them on a project and then decide what type of, whether I want to put a rhinestone or a pearl or a stamen. And that's what I love about these um, is you can customize them to however you want. So I hope you've enjoyed. These are the Heartfelt Creations, the Ariana Blooms. Of blooms this is the die and then the stamp so check out cut at home's blog i'll have all the links in the description box below there will be detailed photos of this project and lots of inspiration on the blog and product codes thanks so much for watching